here with a tutorial on how to create the Dave Hill effect as it's commonly known as on the internet now in Photoshop. So this is not too hard of a technique to figure out how to do and master so let's get started. So let me just give you a quick preview of what the effect is going to look like when you're all done. So here's the effect here. I think it's a really cool effect. I like it. I saw it a couple months ago and I finally learned how to do it. So now I want to pass on that knowledge. So let's get started. Let's get rid of this and here we go. So one thing you always want to do when manipulating images or doing any edits to images in Photoshop is duplicate your background layer so that way you have something to fall on if you screw up. So this is going to be your backup. So to do that, you select your background layer and drag it down to this icon here. So the icon that looks like a folded up post-it note or something like that. And now we can hide the background layer and we want to take the background copy layer and duplicate it one more time. And now it's time to apply effects. So the first effect we need to apply is the high pass filter. So we'll go to filter, other, and high pass. Um, now what works best is if you try to keep the radius between the values of 2 and 6 pixels you don't necessarily have to stay in that range but uh, from what other people on the internet said and through my own practice those the range of 2 to 6 seems to work really well and it also depends on your image like the resolution and what the image is and also your personal preference but I'm just suggesting staying between 2 and 6 pixels so you could scrub through 2 and 6 or any other number and I believe I'm not 100% sure but what you're looking for is like the detail in the edges of parts of the image so when you select like a lower number like 2 the lines are thinner and there's not too much detail and it's not as grainy but when you go up to like 6 or a higher number you could see more color and it's a lot more grainy so I like it more up in, in the higher well, um, range so something like 4.7 that looks nice to me and it should turn out good also just make sure you have preview checked or else if you don't nothing is going to be showing up here except for in the preview window so then we can hit OK and now we need to change the blend mode of this layer that we just applied the high pass filter to so to do that you want to go in, in this area up here which says normal and this is your blending mode area so you want to click on the down arrow to bring up th this whole list of blend modes and we want to select vivid light and now we're pretty much done with changing anything on that and now the last thing we need to do is merge these two layers so merge the visible layers so there's two ways you could do that you could go up to layer and then merge visible or if you like keyboard shortcuts you could hit control shift E on the PC and command shift E on the Mac and it'll merge the two visible layers, so the only ones with the eyes open. So since we hid the background layer, that did not get touched. Only the top two layers that we just worked on. So now we want to duplicate this again, so you should know how to do that. Drag it down to this post-it note looking icon. And now we need to apply a high pass filter again, but this time with different settings. So if we go back to filter, other, high pass. And now the recommended values for this are anywhere between 5 and 8 pixels. So 5 and 8, same thing, you're looking for detail, or just pick something that looks good to you, like catches your eye or whatever. So uh, I like 7, 7 looks okay. And I'm just going to hit okay again. Once again we need to change the blending mode. So this time we're going to select color, so same thing, click the down arrow, and go down to the bottom to color. And you can see that now the image lost a lot of its color. So we want to bring some of that back. And now the way to do that is adjust the opacity of the layer. So you could do this by using the scrubby slider, clicking this arrow, adjusting it here, or typing in the number. I always like to use a scrubby slider. It's a lot easier, or I think that's what it's called. And the suggested range for this is 40 to 60. Yeah, I know there's a lot of suggested ranges they should try to stick to but if you stick to them you'll get the best result but it might be hard to remember these at the beginning so just maybe write them down on a piece of paper or something like that so between 40 and 60 
So you can see the higher we get with the opacity, the less saturation there is with our colors. And the lower we get, there's more saturation. So I think I'll just go 50. It's right in between 40 and 60, and it looks pretty good. And now, once again, we need to merge the visible layer. So control shift D, command shift D on the Mac. And that's it for that part. Now, we want to duplicate this layer once again add a surface blur this time so now filter blur surface blur all the way at the bottom and you pretty much want to use these settings you want to use a radius of 3 pixels and a threshold of 23 so you can see it's blurring out the image so I think it's somewhere around like 10 at default I'm not really sure but if we bump it up to 23 you could see that the image is now blurred. And you don't have to stick to these values. You could change them if you want to, or so you could have it less blurred or more blurred. It doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to stick to 3 and 23. And then we hit OK. So now this is not necessarily a problem. It could be to some people, but this, um, this step I'm going to show you is um, optional. So in this image, there's some texture that I want to keep in. So like the grill and whatever these other parts are, um, air vents, I guess. So to do that, you want to add a layer mask, which is this icon here. And we want to click that, and you're going to see this other icon pop up, this white box next to your image icon. So now to get back the texture, what we want to do is select our brush tool. So you can hit B on the keyboard, or go over to here and select the brush, the brush tool. Now we want to make sure that our foreground and background colors are reset so to do that you can hit D on the keyboard and now you can see these swapped but we want to make sure black is selected so you can hit X on the keyboard to get black as your foreground color or use this little toggle arrow here. So just make sure you have a brush selected and the color is black and that you're on the layer mask. So a quick way to check that you're on the layer mask is that if there's this border around this white icon here. So then zoom into the parts that you want to get the texture back, so in this case the grill like I said, and just start painting. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just depends on you. And like I said, you don't really need to do this, I just want to do this for this case. You don't really see too much happening, I don't know why you don't really see it. Last time I did this you could see it. Uh, there you go, you can see how some of the blur went away. Let me just show you real quick. So I'm painting the blur back, and if you look right here specifically, you can see the detail came back. I'm not going to take too long, I'm just going to do this vent here, and then this vent. And then you could zoom back out, and now we have some of the texture back in the image, and I think it'll look a little bit cooler when we're done. So now we want to Merge the visible layers once again, so control shift D, and there's one more thing we need to do before we get the final effect, the Dave Hill effect. So we want to go to filter, sharpen, and unsharpen mask at the bottom. Let me change these values so you can see what's happening. Uh, you want to, for the mount, you want to type in 100. For the radius, you want to have a radius of 40 pixels, and threshold could be between 0 and 2 for the best results, because it'll get you the the image as closest to the, the Dave Hill effect. If you go bring it up to a higher threshold, you're not really getting an effect at all, so it kind of defeats the purpose, but like I said, this it's going to be your image, so you could put it wherever you want, any of these settings. Um, so since I said between... 0 and 2, uh, let's see, I'll just select 2, even 3 looks good, in some cases a number like 9 looks good, but I'll just go with 2, and then hit OK. Yeah, let's zoom back out, get the full image. This is the effect right here, so this is pretty much the finished product. You could do a little bit more tweaking, I guess, whatever else you know, but I'll show you the comparison. So. This is what we started with, 
and this is what we ended with with not too many steps this is kind of a couple of ranges that you need to remember and values and that's really it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial more importantly I hope you learned something from this and so thanks for watching please rate and comment thanks